Support for this episode comes from Modern Football Technology. Modern Football Technology provides real-time opponent tendencies and self-scout while eliminating manual data entry into Huddle, DV Sport, and Exos. If you're tired of tools that are time-consuming to learn and perform inconsistently at best, then we recommend Modern Football for a fresh perspective. Schedule a demo today at teammofo.com to see a battle-tested tool that's proven to perform and deliver value. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code CC10 to receive 10% off your first year. And listen to our recent episode featuring Folsom High School Defensive Coordinator Jordan Ersick to learn more about how the 2023 California State Champion uses modern football to dominate their opponents. think if you focus too much on the opponent you end up screwing yourself in the long run I think it's it's so much about you know how are we improving how are we getting better as we move through the early season understanding how we continue to evolve and build around what we established in camp can be a challenge we have to ask ourselves how much more can our team handle are they ready for the next step in the progression how much do we know about this opponent that we can adjust to or add a wrinkle for while we may have some data to work off in the early weeks, we need to remember that the opponent is going through that early season evolution as well. As you will hear today, it goes back to our teaching methods we used in camp and the fundamentals that we established a few weeks back, even though it may seem like a distant memory as the urgency of the season hits. Today we hear from Utah Defensive Coordinator Morgan Scally, Heidelberg University Defensive Coordinator Brandon Jacobson, San Jacinto High School Defensive Coordinator John Rice, and the Defensive Coordinator of the defending D3 National Champion North Central College, Shane Durking. They give us insight into the approach they take of preparing for an early season opponent, adding wrinkles, and making adjustments. What you see on tape is a direct reflection of what you teach and how you teach. Video is important, but if you don't teach well, you're not going to like what you see on your video. First Down Playbook has been helping coaches teach better for 13 years. It allows you to present installs, playbooks, and practice cards in half the time with NFL quality. Coaching tools like video pairing, a player app, practice schedules, and wristband sheets have made First Down Playbook a program management system with everything in one place. If you're in a position of leadership with your football program, receive a free one-week look at First Down Playbook. Call them at 512 512- 814-6158 or visit them on their website or social media. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code COACH24 to receive a $100 discount off the normal $700 First Down Playbook team membership price. Links and the phone number are in the show notes. First up is Utah Defensive Coordinator Morgan Scally. He drives home the idea that it's always about fundamentals. In spite of all the chaos that may happen early on, a good team can step back and be sound in the fundamentals that they were taught that prepared them for the season. It's the best way to deal with the unknown that comes along with the early season and opponents who are evolving just like us. Well, I think the biggest thing is making sure that they understand that the process is what matters. The process is what gets you results. It's behavior that gets you results. It's not scheme. And so as much as we may have a couple of wrinkles here and there in scheme, it's all about the fundamentals and techniques of the game that pretty much win you the, the football game. It's tougher when you're facing opponents maybe that you don't face from year to year. Maybe they've had a coaching change and helping them understand what they need to study, what film they need to look at. And our guys do a pretty good job at least our upperclassmen of helping the underclassmen understand how we function, how we go about our day-to-day operations. And I think if you focus too much on the opponent, you end up screwing yourself in the long run. I think it's, it's so much about, you know, how are we improving? How are we getting better? They understand the things that we're looking for on the defensive side of the ball and the goals that we set at the beginning of the season, which they're a part of. 
again, the focus is on behavior, 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 and it's one week at a time. Yeah, I think that's so important because I know every year, week one, no matter what they did last year, you're going to face a different team, and there's usually changes on staff somewhere. Things might be a little bit different, and it can drive you crazy in, in trying to do the research and figure out exactly what they're going to be. But those first weeks, as you pointed out, is is the putting the focus on yourselves more productive than trying to figure out here's everything they might do. Yeah. I, we go back and look at the Florida game from last year and what, you know, what lost us the game. It wasn't scheme. It was our inability to hold gaps or inability to tackle properly. And, and that's what it is. And so when you face a very good opponent week one, that's what's going to show up. The team that is, more fundamentally and technically sound is usually the team that ends up winning the football game. As coaches, we know that some of the biggest hurdles to our team's success can come from off the field. Your team needs support to tackle the endless list of expenses, uniforms, training equipment, travel, and more. But raising that money can feel like a full-time job. Thankfully, there's Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with your team every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser. With options for online donations, digital discount cards, premium product sales, and even spirit shops, Vertical Raise has top-of-the-line solutions for every fundraising style. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com and we'll get you connected with an exclusive offer on your first fundraiser. Next, we talk with Brandon Jacobson, defensive coordinator at D3 Heidelberg University. He talks about the teaching progression that they used in camp and how that applies all year long. He then shares his process for thinking about the opponent and layering in concepts which were installed in camp. So I'm a big walk, jog, run method person. Same thing I use in the weight room with our guys, strength and conditioning. Same thing I use on the football field. So for us, it's going to be our way of teaching is, okay, we're in the meeting room. We have a physical playbook on paper. We are going to draw on the board. And then we're going to get to watching film of what I just drew on the board or what we talked about. And then we're going to have a walkthrough of them doing the driller technique then we're going to have individual drills being able to work that driller technique. And then it goes to group work, whether that's a run fit, a blitz pickup or seven on seven. And then that moves to team sessions. And for us, once we've drilled home those techniques, now we can build a little bit more and build a little bit more. So, you know, in in basketball, they call it drill stacking. You're going to stack one drill, to another drill, to another drill. So for us, it's almost like technique stacking or play stacking. You have one concept, and now we can have a little bit added to it and a little bit added to it and a little bit added to it to where it's not we're not throwing 10 things at them day one. By day five, we might have 10 things in, but it was a slow transition to get there. So then as you head into like a week one of the season, you know, you're transitioning out of camp, and, you know, how much then are you trying to stick with here was the install for camp, or is it now, hey, we have this actual opponent out there, and maybe this doesn't happen. You know, you've had some time to plan for one, but you see film on two or weeks two or three, you know, adding some things to it, adding some tweaks to it. I guess how much is sticking with what was installed in camp versus, as you said, you hold back a little bit and now start to layer that in? Weekly, we are looking at that opponent to see, okay, what do we like? What do we not like? And is there anything we can use to, for lack of better terms, expose what they don't do great? So I'm a big believer in what did they do well? Let's take that away. And what are they not great at? Let's expose them. So maybe it's a certain position on the O-line. Maybe it's a protection. And maybe we've been running a certain blitz from the field all camp. But we know that their protection, the man side, is to the bench all game. So now we're going to flip that blitz and run it from the bench. You know, so it might not be, hey, we introduce that blitz from the bench at all. We just always did it from the field. But week one, we might bring that blitz from the bench now. John Rice has spent 35 years coaching the game at multiple levels, including winning a national championship as part of the John Bosco staff in California. He's now the defensive coordinator at San Jacinto High School. 
He shares how taking it slow allows them to do more and his thoughts on getting new ideas in season and how he thinks about fitting those into what they do. I think one real simple one is always to keep best practices and teaching theory at the forefront when you're trying to install your defensive package. And for us, it just, and our staff and our players, we're repeating over and over, you got to go slow to go fast. Kids need to understand the basics of whatever you're teaching inside and out before you go on to introduce another related topic. And it's just common, you know, best practice learning theory that the brain learns by attaching new knowledge to old knowledge and making connections. So we go slow to go fast. And once we master a concept, then we add a related concept and we try to name those things in families and teach them so that kids can go slow. And then when you put everything together, it'll appear complicated, but but we figured that you could increase their learning and their production by going slow to go fast. Coach, I agree with that 100% and, and uh, definitely is the way to approach it. I also know that as coaches, we do get excited about that next thing. And uh, we're always anxious to be able to go ahead and get to it and put it in. But for you, what things do you have your coaches looking at? What are you looking at to say, okay, we've mastered this. We're ready for this next step in the progression. I think in the off season, you need to do uh, an install, you know, an, an install progression and have an idea how, how things naturally relate to prior concepts and teach them in that order. So everything starts with the base defense and then things that we teach after that are related. So they're not totally differently memorized. So the coaches need to understand that. And then the players, when we're teaching something new, there will be the same skills. Uh, I think another way to state it would be you minimize new teaching when you teach related concepts. You don't teach a bunch of separate concepts. And there needs to be some understanding the way you teach it, that it's related, and the coaches need to understand that. And, and when you're coaching a, a staff that's less experienced or they have less experience than you, it's, you're really trying to sell and coach your coaches as well. So, it, yeah, I mean, I think meeting with your coaches and explaining your process and what your belief system is too is to get them to buy in as well. I know anytime you go to a new situation, there is that period where, I mean, you as a coordinator, uh, as a head coach, you know, anytime you're leading, you want ideas coming in. And especially I've found with some younger coaches, maybe who haven't been doing it as long, you know, it, it is that balance between, hey, this is a great idea with exactly what you said. How does it fit with us? How can we teach same as? And, and there's always... You know that you have to be efficient. If this is something completely new, definitely going to be hard to teach. And I've also found this to be true that if it's something new and I went along with that idea, I probably won't end up calling it because I'm not comfortable with it. So how do you balance that out and, and really mentor those young coaches to bring ideas to you in the right manner? Because an idea that's just thrown out there and not connected to anything really doesn't have a lot of usefulness. Man, you, you hit the nail on the head. First of all is to realize there is so much great stuff out there on both sides of the ball. And I get tempted, and this is my 40th year, and you just cannot teach it all, in my opinion, and be effective. So I think, first of all, is when you have the, the learning environment for your, teach your players and your coaches that you say, look, you may have great ideas, and they are great ideas, but they may not fit with what we want to do. And what I would like you to do is tell me what you think. And then I'm constantly sharing ideas, video presentations with my coaches for their files and they can take it and put it away for later on so they can learn and encourage the coaches to learn our system first, whatever we're doing, learn our system so that what you have, you may be able to relate in your terms and you may be able to bring up a way that it's presentable to the kids. And then the biggest thing I think for your whole staff is if you're a leader, is to really let those guys know that do not take stuff personal if your suggestion is not used. It doesn't mean they're not good ideas. You just, as a head coach, I think you can do more damage to your program in the short term if you're trying to please everybody. You have to be willing to stand up and say, this is what I believe in. This is why we're running it. But in the end, you don't have time to justify everything. You try to communicate that in off season and uh, have your coaches trust you and be a good leader. 
look for input, but at some, sometimes they have to not take a personal if you don't take every suggestion they have. We finish up with two-time D3 national champion defensive coordinator Shane Durkin. He notes that a coach must always be ready for adjustments. He goes back to their install and looks at what answers they have available and the process of organizing those for game day. One of the things in our industry that we've got to be great at is we've got to make sure, you know, we've got a sound game plan and we always have to be ready for adjustments. So one of the things as a young defensive coordinator that I always did was on the back of my call sheet, depending on the week, sometimes it it may have been even another page, I would always have adjustments. Hey, these are the things that can hurt us, right, in the run game by personnel, 10 personnel, 11 personnel, 20, 12, 21. These are the things that we could hurt us, we could run into issues, and to already have that plan before the bullets are flying and everyone's looking to you, you know, for answers, to be prepared. So then when we meet as a defensive staff at halftime, we've already had that prepared and now we're ready to present it to the kids. And the same thing with the pass game. Now, early in the season especially, there are going to be times where, Hey, you didn't get film on this team. You play them week one and they got a transfer stud X receiver. You've got to have things, you know, within your tool bag that you can always resort back to. But I think the preparation beforehand is, hey, these are the issues that could arise. And when they come up, we're going to be prepared as a defensive staff to be able to present that to their, right, in a calm manner so everybody doesn't panic when we run into a, a tough situation, you know, in halftime after that first half. In terms of your workflow for that, is that something that's part of your game plan process? Is it a separate meeting? Do you guys bring that together? How do you guys approach that just in your weekly workflow? Yeah, so once we have the plan in place Thursday night, what I tell, you know, our staff is, hey, look at all the scenarios that can come up, you know, that could present issues for us. And they bring me all of those scenarios. And then from there, you know, go back, watch those specific, you know, whether it's personnel formation, these pass concepts, these run concepts, and then really go into, hey, here's our our base install from fall camp. If we have to get away from the game plan, these are things our staff is comfortable with. These are things our players are comfortable with that we could go out there and we could execute right at the drop of a hat if things were to go sideways. The beauty of our game is that a team, a defense, and offense are constantly evolving week to week to strengthen what they do and utilize their personnel best while accounting for the strengths and weaknesses of the opponent. As these coaches shared a good teaching process, reliance on fundamentals, a plan of how to progress and adjust are what allow you to stay ahead of the opponent. Keep tuning in all season long for insight like that shared by today's guests. These short episodes serve to validate what you are doing as a coach and spark new ideas for you to continue to move forward. Be sure to sign up for our weekly tip sheet, which runs down all the ideas shared throughout the week. And check the show notes for related episodes and resources from these coaches.